thank you all for coming. As you can see, it's a, a beautiful site here, and uh, we want to uh, have some of the speakers who, uh, and, and leaders who made this possible today. So I'd like to uh, start off by introducing um, council member for the 14th district uh, who, fought, who is fighting the fight vigorously to make sure that all unhoused Angelinos uh, are taken care of. And uh, this is one of those solutions. So uh, I'd like to introduce Councilman Kevin DeLeon. Thank you so very much. Good morning to each and every one of you. It is indeed a wonderful day uh, this morning in the great city of Los Angeles. I want to say good morning uh, to everyone here. It is my special privilege to welcome you to the Arroyo Seco Tiny Home Village. In fact, the seventh tiny village to open in the great city of Los Angeles. However, let me underscore the following. This, is, this tiny home village is set apart from every other village, becoming the largest in the nation and leading as example of how, yes. And leading an example how it is possible to take people off the streets very quickly into housing at a very feasible cost. As you look around, you can see for yourself that this village stands above every other homeless housing project with its incredible artwork. Every single home in the village, a unique piece of art woven together into a community of hope and second chances. So I want to give a very special shout out. He's not here today, but he's a YouTube artist. And that's Zach Shia, who came and inspired us with the idea that Rowan gave us to paint all of the tiny cabins. So let's get up for Zach, please. Now, this is what this village is all about, restoring hope to people whose lives have been shattered into a million pieces by mental illness, addiction, domestic violence, institutional racism, foster care, violence, war, and quite frankly, all of the above. It's about giving a second chance to those who've been knocked down by the challenges in life. Maybe it's a third or fourth chance. There's no doubt that aside from the pandemic, Los Angeles is facing the, its most challenging crisis in its 240 year history, the humanitarian crisis of homelessness. But it's more than just a crisis of homelessness. It's become a crisis of despair and hopelessness affecting us all. A problem once confined to Skid Row by institutionalized policies of containment, homelessness has spread across our city, across our county, and across our state. It's not just here in Los Angeles, but nowhere is homelessness more concentrated than here in City Council District number 14. If LA is the epicenter of this crisis, then CD14, the district that I have the honor to represent, is ground zero, with more unhoused individuals than those living in Houston or Phoenix, the fourth and fifth largest cities in America. Whether they live in Boyle Heights or in Westchester, Pacoima, Venice, West Hills, or Watts, homelessness is the human tragedy that is happening on our streets for all of us to bear witness and experience. But that's changing. And today marks another step, a positive step toward reversing the pain and suffering that those on our streets are experiencing today. Now, Arroyo Seco Tiny Village offers 100 in 17 homes with 220 available beds. We did this in a record three months, 90 days. We constructed this in three months. So I want to give it up to the city family who worked night and day to make this happen. Now, as you will see, we have bathrooms here as well as showers. We have meals that will be served here three times a day, breakfast, lunch, as well as dinner. We have washers and we have dryers. We have HVAC systems, and it was cold last night. Miguel and I, Assembly Member Miguel Santiago and I, slept last night in, we had our own uh, cabin shelter. And I can tell you, it was cold, like it is cold right now. But it was warm and toasty inside. And as we enter the winter months, we know that every individual deserves to have access to warm shelter. Now, just to be clear, and let me underscore the following. This is not the solution but it's a critical part of the overall solution, moving people out of homelessness to help stabilize their lives and prepare them for 
permanent housing. Now, I've been this, in this fight for a long time. As your former president of your California State Senate, I had the honor to champion No Place Like Home, an innovative and ambitious proposal to address homelessness uh, by securing $2 billion in bond financing for the construction of housing, permanent housing, for our chronically homeless community members who are severely mentally ill. But as we know, the problem of homelessness has grown. In the last 20 months of the pandemic, have heightened this challenge. But there's reason for optimism. In August, the City Council unanimously approved my, my plan, A Way Home, a comprehensive plan that for the first time commits the city to develop 25,000 housing units by the year 2025 for our community members experiencing homelessness. We are charting a new course with the North Star to guide us. Earlier this year, we moved 110 individuals into housing in El Sereno after we purchased two hotels along Huntington Drive, clearing an encampment of over 100 unhoused residents. And three weeks ago, Mayor Eric Garcetti and I broke ground, along with Miguel Santiago, on LA's largest permanent supportive housing project in the heart of Skid Row. In a few weeks, in a few short weeks, we're, we'll, be, we'll be opening another tiny home village in Eagle Rock, where we'll house another 100 individuals experiencing homelessness. And when that's complete, between the two tiny home villages, we will be able to house nearly 90% of those experiencing homelessness right in here in Northeast LA. So I'm proud to say that over the last year, CD14 led every district across the city of LA with the most new housing units. Homelessness is our biggest challenge, is our biggest challenge but it's not an impossible one, especially with the North Star that has put LA on a course to creating 25,000 housing units by the year 2025, a North Star we've never had. We also have partners who are more committed than ever before to fight until we win this challenge. So I want to recognize very quickly, you know, the, the hardworking women, women and men who really helped put this together. My incredible staff, let's get up for my incredible staff of CD14. They deserve so much credit. They've been committed all the way through. I want to recognize as well, if I can find, here we go. I want to recognize the LA Department of Recs and Parks, Ada Anita Mitchum. The LA Bureau of Engineers, we have Deborah Weintraub here with us today. Deborah Weintraub here. The LA Fire Department, Department Chief Philip Fingal, of Fliggle, I believe. Our very own, and you hear from, you'll hear from them very soon, Hope of the Valley Rescue Mission, uh, Lori Kraft and Ken Kraft. Yeah. And Rowan Van Slee, the historic Highland Neighborhood Council. And let's give it up for our very own coffee shop from uh, Highland Park on the corner of 50th and York. That is Cafe de Leche. Cafe de Leche, who's provided us with this incredible coffee. And I also want to uh, uh, recognize also to our neighborhood councils our historic Highland Park Neighborhood Council that's in the house here today, as well as SELA Neighborhood Homeless Coalition. A very special thank you to our neighbors here uh, in Highland Park. Uh, we had several open houses, and they came, and they joined us, and they walked up and down, and they saw for the very first time, you know, uh, the homeless tiny cabin village, and they said, you know what, we're on board. We do have misgivings, without a doubt, but that's okay. In a democracy, not everyone's going to be on the same page. But I want to, very, I want to thank all our neighbors uh, to the right of us here today because they have fully come on board. Now, no one, and let me underscore the following, no one has shown perseverance and fortitude in the face of tremendous obstacles as well as criticism than our very own Mayor Eric Garcetti. He stood up each and every time and with an unwavering attitude fought and succeeded in getting the federal and state dollars that we've needed, dollars that we've used 
dollars that we use to house thousands of Angelinos in Project Room Key as well as Project Home Key. And when I made reference to the two hotels that we closed escrow on December 28th of last year and housed over 100 folks living on the encampment on Huntington Drive in El Sereno, it was because the mayor's team, the mayor himself, Mary Hodges, who's here as well too, uh, the great uh, team that the mayor has in the homeless unit that made this come to fruition. Eric Garcetti has not allowed this crisis to, 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 to deter him on his commitment to the people of Los Angeles. And that's why I'm very proud to have him here today to join me in opening this new site for his leadership over the very city departments that made this possible. So with that, I have the honor to bring up our great mayor of the city of Los Angeles, Mayor Eric Garcetti. Well, first, let me start by congratulating Councilmember Kevin DeLeon and his team. For 12 years, I had the honor of serving as a council member. I think being mayor is the best job I'll ever have. Probably council member is the most enjoyable job I ever had. Um, and it's one in which you're so closely connected to every block and every street and every neighborhood. And you've really emerged as a warrior for your neighborhoods and in this city. And I want to thank you for the work that you have done, the walking the walk as well as talking the talk. Um, and I want to thank this incredible team that is up here because we have two state legislators who are deeply committed to making sure that the state does have a role in solving homelessness when just five or six years ago before they were even there, I had conversations with a previous governor and some legislators who said, that's a local problem. when we know this is a state problem and you've proven it with great legislation and funding to make that happen. My sister, the supervisor who uh, co-led us through this pandemic. I miss our calls five times a day, uh, trying to figure out what a coronavirus was at the beginning. Um, but Catherine Barger is just an extraordinary human being, and I would go anywhere. Um, if she had been spending the night here last night, I probably would have come too, just so we could have hung out, had some s'mores, done whatever. But it was uh, an amazing thing. And the crafts, I want to thank you for who you are. Hope of the Valley is now Hope of the City. You might have to ch change your name. Um, but you and Rowan and everybody who's been a part of this team, this is our eighth tiny home village. Um, almost all of them are run by this organization. Um, but it's more than an organization. It's a family. It's a vision. Um, it's a spirit. And it's a calling. And it's been my honor to be there alongside you. To the community who has said yes, thank you. You know, the Arroyo Seco is holy ground. Um, it might sound like water, but I always joke the water of Los Angeles is the, the traffic going by on a freeway. The first freeway ever built. Uh, in the United States of America. This river, which where it intersects with the Los Angeles River is where Father Juan Crespi took communion in 1769 and christened the river El Rio de Nuestra Señora la Reina de Los Ángeles de Porciúncula, which thankfully is shortened to L.A. now. But this is a place and a space in which Native peoples walk through and that in Native land, the council member and I uh, return to our Tongva, Tongve tribe um, just uh, a few weeks ago during Indigenous Peoples Day, we come here to rebuild a vision. Robert Browning once wrote a poem that says, a man's reach must always exceed his grasp. And since we live in 2021, a person's reach must always exceed his or her grasp. In other words, we reach for things we may not hold. That's what being human is. The slave who reaches for her freedom never to experience it so that her daughter can be free. The woman who calls on the ability for everybody to vote, even though she never was able to pull a lever in a single election. Those who seek to desegregate schools while they never have the chance to attend an integrated school. Those who fight for marriage equality and die before they can marry their loved ones. These things are what being a human being is about. When I ran for mayor some nine plus years ago, I said, our mission must be to end homelessness. I remember people reading like that's naive and stupid and unrealistic. And yet it must be our goal. It must be what we reach for, even when it feels sometimes beyond our grasp. Because the second line of that poem says, after all, what's a heaven for? After all, what's a heaven for? So today we are gaining ground. This is the eighth tiny home village of its kind citywide, but it is now the largest in this city and in the United States of America. It's individualized. Each home has a vision, a picture, it has a spirit in it, and it will be inhabited not by the walls that are here, but the people within it, their stories, of which we will hear one, I know, later today. And this coalition that came together, 
Um, and I also want to give a shout out to State Senator Marielena Durazo. But uh, the access specific construction, who architecture, the city staff. And I want to thank the city staff who has stepped up every single time we have said we want to do congregate shelters, we want to do tiny home villages, we want to do safe parking. Picture this right now. This is one of 56 different projects that we have done just in the last few years. When people say, I've got an idea for how to solve homelessness, I say, great, let's do it. Some people think it's tiny home villages. Great, let's do them. Some people say we need more shelters. We're going to do two or three, then 15. We've done 28 of them. People said we need permanent supportive housing. Great, let's put the biggest permanent supportive housing measure ever in U.S. history on the ballot and get it passed. And then when we get it passed, let's deliver it two years early with 1,000 units more and 15,000 per unit less. When people say let's build more housing in general, we've tripled the pace of housing construction in this city. When people say let's do it along transit corridors and have a linkage fee, which means that developers making money for market rate housing need to pay for affordable housing. We've done it after 40 years of talking. So I can't help but be optimistic. When we say what a great idea it would be to partner with the state and buy motels and hotels and apartment buildings, we did that, 15 of them. And then when we ran out of state money, we did five on our own dime. We took $10 million and now are spending a billion dollars a year out of our city budget thanks to this city council and my team. And I want to thank Che Ramirez, who's somewhere around here. Where's Che? Our deputy mayor, right there, keeping his Lakers uh, colors and mask on always. We don't talk about the Dodgers yet, but keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Deborah Weintraub, everybody uh, here, Lassa, Heidi Marston, and Reckon Parks, who stepped up in the midst of a pandemic and converted nearly every rec center into a homeless shelter when we were worried about our unhoused neighbors getting COVID. And the results are clear. You were more likely to get COVID if you were housed than unhoused due to those efforts. I want to thank LAPD, who I see represented here, and thank you for being a critical partner. I want to thank those who are reimagining how we can deal with mental health and the way the county is stepping up so that this month we will roll out for the first time 24-7, 911 vans. Instead of bringing a badge to a mental health crisis, we'll bring a practitioner to a mental health crisis. And so when we look at what is going to be invested here, we see hope. We see hope in the turnaround of each story. And don't tell me that an army of 4 million people can house the brothers and sisters, 40,000 of them, in this city. So today we celebrate. Tomorrow we get to work and we look at the next place that we can find the next site. But we plant seeds that we know will blossom. And I want to thank you, Councilmember De Leon. I want to thank this entire community for saying yes. Every time we say yes, we see a day in which homeless will, homelessness will be a thing of the past. Y también muy brevemente en español, estamos aquí para la apertura de Arroyo Seco, un sitio de viviendas de Kenia en cual creará 115 hogares y 224 camas para algunos de nuestros vecinos más vulnerables. Este es el sitio más grande en los Estados Unidos. Y gracias al concejal Kevin De León, nuestros asambleístas y todo el equipo, especialmente Hope of the Valley, aquí en la comunidad del noreste de Los Ángeles, por su uh, coraje en este. En Los Ángeles estamos trabajando muy duro con sitios como esto, con nueve viviendas, con... Um, uh, refugios y todas las cosas que necesitamos finalmente a parar la indigencia en Los Ángeles. En versiones históricas del Estado, de la ciudad, más de un mil de millón de dólares en nuestro presupuesto este año. Y gracias a toda la gente que son parte de esta inversión en la esperanza aquí en este día. With that, I'll toss it back the council member. Thank you all. Let's celebrate today. Thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Mayor, for your very eloquent uh, and powerful uh, words, uh, both in English and Spanish. And, and let me em emphasize one thing that I'd like to um, underscore. No one individual mayor, no council member um, is responsible exclusively uh, for the humanitarian crisis of homelessness. This is everybody. This is from the President of the United States, to members of Congress, to governors, to state legislative bodies, to county board supervisors, to mayors and council members. We're in this together. Uh, no politician has the selective, uh, exclusive choice to sort of pick and choose their own constituents and say, well, the homelessness, that's our issue. That's your issue over there. 
So I want to thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, for your incredible leadership. Let's give it up for our Mayor, Eric Garcetti. Uh, next, I have uh, the uh, great privilege of introducing our warrior uh, in our own state capital uh, in Sacramento. Uh, she is our assemblywoman. Uh, she is a sharp tip of the spear to work and advocate for the resources that we deserve here in our local communities uh, in the great city of L.A. She's a home girl. Uh, an immigrant who crossed that border uh, growing up in Ball Heights as well as El Sereno and now she's our Assemblywoman for the Assembly 51st District. Let's get it for Assemblywoman Wendy Carrillo. Wendy Carrillo. Well, good morning everyone and welcome to the 51st Assembly District. First and foremost, I just want to thank everybody that's here, thank our council member, our mayor, our supervisors, the incredible team behind this incredible effort. And what we are seeing today in this, uh, with these tiny homes is really about hope. It's about the opportunity that is available to those that are in the process of transitioning into permanent housing. In the state of California, I have the uh, privilege of serving as your chair of Budget Sub 4, which is state administration, which oversees uh, $12 billion that got signed into law by Governor Newsom to continue. Yes, that's a huge, huge applause for that. $12 billion across the state of California to address the issue of housing and homelessness. A huge chunk of that coming here to the city and the county of Los Angeles. Why? Because we have the most need. It is a disproportionate amount of folks that need resources, that need aid, that need mental health assistance that call the city of Los Angeles and the county of Los Angeles home. And I also want to thank my colleague from the San Fernando Valley, Assemblywoman Luz Rivas, who was spearheading a bill that we actually uh, put into the budget to ensure that those dollars and those resources uh, made it out and actually come towards uh, the county and towards the city of Los Angeles. And at the end of the day, housing is a human right. Everyone should have a right to live in dignity, to be safe, to be safe with their families and their loved ones. And I am very happy to learn, I learned this morning, that this tiny village right here in the Arroyo Seco also allows for individuals to come with their pets. Especially if, you have, if you've been on living uh, on the streets and you have a small dog or a dog or a cat or whatever that looks like for you, there is an attachment formed. There is family associated with that and not a lot of places offer that. And so I think that's an incredibly important part for healing, for dignity, for peace of mind, for mental health, and we should all be very supportive of those efforts to ensure that uh, there's an opportunity for folks to move forward. Unas breves palabras en español, es un orgullo estar aquí con ustedes. Yo orgullosamente represento esta comunidad en la Asamblea Estatal del Estado de California, y tengo el orgullo de uh, también um, tener el, el, un, uno de los comités del presupuesto uh, este año el gobernador Newsom, uh, con la dirección de la Asamblea y el Senado y mucho trabajo a través del Estado, alocamos 12 billones con B, 12 billones o mil millones uh, para combatir uh, este problema que tenemos a través del Estado. Y la verdad es que en la ciudad de Los Ángeles y el condado de Los Ángeles tiene la mayoría de la necesidad recursos de salud mental, recursos para poder vivir en dignidad, la oportunidad para que comunidades se sientan uh, seguras y poder salir adelante. Le quiero dar una, un gran agradecimiento a mi colega de, del Valle de San Fernando, asamblista Luz Rivas, que también tuvo una, una parte de legislación que actualmente la pusimos a través del presupuesto del Estado para que este dinero venga a nuestras comunidades y que al fin del día nuestras personas sin sin recursos, personas sin hogar, a familias, tengan una oportunidad de poder vivir en dignidad. Así que estoy muy agradecida de estar aquí con ustedes, con nuestro concejal, nuestro alcalde, supervisores y todas las personas que han puesto este programa uh, que se ha hecho realidad. Porque al fin del día, poder vivir en dignidad y tener un hogar no es un privilegio, es un derecho. Y cada persona a través de la ciudad de Los Ángeles y el condado de Los Ángeles tiene que tener un derecho o un hogar a vivir en dignidad, a vivir uh, en una comunidad segura. Y esto es lo que estamos haciendo hoy en este día. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Assemblywoman Wendy Carrillo. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor had just uh, 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 
uh, tugged my ear a tad bit, and he just uh, reminded me that currently right now uh, in the reconciliation uh, budget negotiations in Washington, D.C., the $300 billion that is before us has been cut down to $150 billion. This is for housing specifically. It, it takes a village to build a tiny village. That means every level of government. So therefore, I'm going to say to everyone, uh, pick up that phone and, and call our Congressman Maxine Waters because she's fighting the hard fight for all of us. This is for housing. $300 billion, and Mr. Mayor just reminded me, it's been cut to $150 billion in half. We need that money because without that money, we cannot make the necessary in investments for housing for unhoused community members. So let's make sure we call. Um, very, uh, let me introduce um, uh, our other sharp tip of the spear in our state capitol. He fights for us every single day. Uh, he's been on this issue with homelessness. We walk the walk in Skid Row. Uh, almost on a weekly uh, basis. Let's get up for our assembly member, Miguel Santiago. Miguel Santiago. Thanks. Thanks. There, there's a whole heck of a lot of people that I want to thank, and everybody who's sitting here who participated, from the people who built, uh, to the mayor who has stood strong on this issue, uh, to our sub-budget chair. But I do want to thank, uh, in particular, Council Member De Leon, because it takes guts to build this. Let's acknowledge, let's acknowledge that. It takes guts to build homeless housing. You know, it t from the community that you got to convince to the work that you got to do to get something done. And let's put this into perspective for a second here. 90 days it took to build this. Last night we were briefed that it takes about an hour to put one of these things up. Look, there's no one silver bullet to solving homelessness. And if there was and one person had all the ideas and one person had all the money, then we would have solved it. That's the bottom line. So this has got to be a critical piece of it. 117 units of tiny homes in a community where in a geographic area of three miles we could canvas this neighborhood and, and offer housing to our unhoused population in this very neighborhood where it's going to have wraparound support services where you get three meals a day where you get sh where there's showers and there's bathrooms it's a game changer I mean let's acknowledge it some of this some of the housing that we're building is taking two to three years five years and it's costing somewhere between five hundred and seven hundred fifty thousand. We were briefed last night that some of this housing is going to cost about fifty-five thousand dollars. In some instances, sixty-five thousand dollars right down the street, if I was informed correctly. So we've got to do this kind of work. And what I and at the center critical piece to understand about tackling the issue of homelessness is to provide a roof over somebody's head. And this is part of what we're doing here today. So Look, there's going to be a lot of different sorts of solutions, a lot of different ideas, and we can't dismiss one. All of them have to be running at the same time. We have close to 45,000 people that are living on the streets. It's an emergency. It's an emergency. If there was ever an emergency in our lifetime, this is it. And it didn't take overnight to do it, so no, we're not going to solve it in one day, one press conference, one building. Take a look at the history of the state of California. We had a governor in Reagan who ran on tackling what was going on in, in Berkeley and then tackling those people who were on the streets and then shut down mental health hospitals. Here in LA, we have the policies of containment during the 80s that thought that the right thing to do was centralize people and put them into one small area, provide services. We all know what that meant. That was code for putting people in one area called Skid Row. You take a look at uh, the tough on crime era and you took a look at what happened in the 2000s. That was not the solution. So we're gonna be unraveling decades and decades of some well-intentioned policies that failed and some uh, d uh, sheep and wolf's clothing policy that didn't end up the way we wanted it to. So when, I, when we say that there's no one silver bullet and somebody's going to criticize this or criticize that, I get it. I understand it. But you got to put all things on the table because it is an emergency. 45, close to 45,000 people are living in the streets of Los Angeles. There is no time to wait. There is no time to say this is not an idea that's going to work. And the mayor is completely right. If, there's, if, there, if people have ideas, bring them forward. We're going to do them. But this idea right here works. About 55,000 to, to build one, uh, 117. The message is pretty simple. If you want to solve homelessness, build some shelter over people's heads. And if communities want to solve homelessness, then embrace the idea of doing permanent supportive housing, of doing emergency shelters, tiny homes, whatever, whatever we can do to solve homelessness and put a roof over people's heads. Because the consequence of not doing that, the consequence of not doing that is having people live on the street in a sort of misery through the type of weather that we have. I'm fortunate that I have one, that I spent um, the night here in one night. 
I'll say that again, right? You get emotional when I talk about this. I'm fortunate that I spent one night in a tiny home because I had a place to go the next morning. And I have a place to go to, to, uh, tonight. But could you imagine when you don't have an option of a tiny home and you live on the streets? It's cold out there. We were shivering out here last night as we were getting briefed. Can you imagine going through the rain? It's going to get 42 degrees. This is a game changer. And every neighborhood and every community should be embracing it. We did $12 billion at the state for Project Home Key, which you helped lead. Thank goodness it's out there. There's going to be close to billions of dollars that will go to local municipalities over two years. But we've got to embrace innovative and new ways of doing it, and that takes guts. That's why I went a little bit longer, because I want to make sure that I emphasize that it takes guts. The mayor and I worked on CEQA exemptions uh, across the city of Los Angeles for permanent supportive housing because it was so hard to get housing done in the city of Los Angeles because residents lawsuit it. Let's not sugarcoat that. They lost... People put lawsuits down when you try to get permanent supportive housing in people's neighborhoods. The message is, if you want to solve homelessness, you got to do it in your neighborhoods and you got to step up and roll up your sleeves. Y le voy a decir muy breve en español, para los medios de comunicación español. Esto va a cambiar el juego de cómo uh, ayudamos a la gente que no tiene vivienda y está desalojada en la calle. El modo de luchar y de, de traer este, uh, soluciones es de hacer este tipo de vivienda que cuestan como 55 mil dólares, duró tres meses de hacerlo y se hacen en una hora. Esto cambia el juego. El modo de luchar contra la gente que vive, luchar para ayudar a la gente que vive en la calle es ponerles un techo en la, en la, en la cabeza, sobre la cabeza. Y esto lo hace. Entonces quiero darle muchas gracias al concejal uh, por tener el ánimo y como dicen en, en mi tierra, las ganas de luchar para asegurar que nuestra comunidad trabaje y ayude a, a, a solucionar este, este problema porque es grave y es una emergencia que estamos viendo aquí. Gracias. Sí, sí. Muchas gracias, mi querido este, Miguelito este, Santiago. Y como dijo Miguel Santiago, lo que estamos enfrentando hoy día es una crisis humanitaria que nunca jamás hemos eh, visto el simple hecho que somos el epicentro de indigencia a lo largo ancho de nuestro país, con más de 40 mil personas viviendo este, en las banquetas, en las calles, callejones, en los parques, en sus coches. Así que... Que quede muy claro, quiero enfatizar que las casas pequeñas no es la panacea de todos los males económicos y sociales de aquellas personas sufriendo en este momento de problemas muy severos mentales, esquizofrenia, por ejemplo, bipolaridad, eh, las adicciones a las eh, drogas ilícitas, no, pero es un paso gigantesco por el bienestar económico, el bienestar mental y físico de nuestra gente indigente que sufre hoy día eh, debido a esta crisis humanitaria. Así que muchas gracias, este, mi querido este Miguel Santiago y buen bueno, que quede muy claro, uh, I just, to just emphasize, um, I've extended the invitation uh, to our wonderful uh, supervisor, Catherine uh, Barger, uh, to say a few words. Uh, she wants to be incognito, uh, so we'll make sure she's incognito right now. But if you do want to interview her one-on-one, -on -one, uh, she's more, but you're more welcome to take over this microphone anytime you want, you know. Um, uh, next, we just only have a couple individuals. That's it. And then we can open it up uh, for uh, individual interviews for all of our elected officials here, uh, for our staff, for everyone who's here today. Uh, let me uh, bring up uh, Ken Kraft. Ken Kraft is the CEO of Esperanza del Valle, Hope of the Valley. Uh, they are our, our service provider, again, here to uh, provide the necessary critical services to our future residents uh, coming next week. Let's get up for... Ken Kraft, Ken Kraft, come on up. Well, special thanks, Councilman Kevin DeLeon, your vision, your tenacity for making stuff happen, and all the other elected officials, Mayor Eric Garcetti, and we're so thankful to have the CEO uh, of Pallet Shelters, Amy's right here. Thank you for your innovation in building this. Last night I was here uh, with many of the other elected officials. At 8.30, I'm going to be honest with you, I was freezing. Okay, I had a sweatshirt on, I had a t-shirt on, I had my jacket on, and I couldn't stop shivering. And finally, I got to go inside my tiny home. And the heater had been cranked on, and within five minutes, I warmed up. And uh, Miguel, just like you, I couldn't stop thinking about, what if I actually had to spend the night? What if I didn't have resources and a roof over my head? I mean, I would be 
praying for daylight just so I could warm up. And unfortunately, that's the reality of so many people that uh, live in homelessness. So we are so thankful. This is the sixth site that we get to bring uh, services to in a tiny home community. I'd like to introduce my wife. Lori, come on up here for a moment. And I'm going to ask Lori just in a nutshell to explain what services will be offered here at this site. And she can do it in Spanish, too. <laughs> First of all, I just want to say it is such an honor for Hope of the Valley to be the service provider and the operator of this beautiful tiny home village. We look so forward to bringing in so many of the local unhoused in this community where they're going to receive hope, healing, and an opportunity to have a new beginning. So we're going to have case managers at this site that are going to receive folks here. They're going to be connecting people to uh, vital resources, Department of Mental Health, Substance Use Disorder Services, vital documentation. Uh, those services, those wraparound services are critical. And again, I've heard said today, and it's so true, uh, this isn't the solution, it is a solution. This is a way that we're gonna stop people from dying on the streets, but ultimately the goal for our team here is to get people on a path and a trajectory to permanent housing. We want to see them permanently housed. And so we have the showers, we have a place for pets, uh, we have every kind of service that folks are gonna need here to be able to get stabilized and once again be on a path toward permanent housing. It is such an honor. Uh, Mayor Garcetti and Council Member De Leon and to all of the city and everybody who made this possible, um, this site, thank you. We are deeply honored. Well, the truth of the matter is we could all stand here and talk all day about what this is about, but I think we need to hear from somebody that was actually homeless, who was living in their car, and was then brought into a tiny home community, and now is permanently housed. Would you give it up to Roya? Roya, come on up here. And Roya, I want you just to share for, share for just, so good to see you again. Share for just a moment, what, it was, what, is it, what was it like living in one of these tiny homes? Uh, tiny homes saved my life and uh, I just want to say thank you so much for everyone and um, it's a good choice. And what was it like actually living inside one of these units? It was, um, people helped me a lot. Um, they, they, it's, uh, tiny homes that are very good. Uh, they have everything, you know, to offer us and um, they save our life. They're like family. They take care of you like a family and um, they, it's, it's a heaven. Oh, thank you so <laughs> thank much, you. Roya. Thank and you. Thank you. <laughs> And then uh, now I'm going to ask uh, Rowan to come up here. We got a little something special for some of our friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first off, I want to thank SoCal Gas really quickly because when Roya got housed, they had just made a $60,000 donation to Hope of the Valley. And I called him up and very impolitely said, that's not enough. Will you pay for all of her furniture? And SoCal Gas did. And, you know, I love that about this city. I'm a citizen in the greatest city on earth. There is nowhere that can compete. And Mr. Mayor, Mr. Councilman, you are making this city better. You really are. Because I came to this country and my immigrant story is probably a little bit different. Blonde hair, blue eyes, white skin. I probably had a different journey. But in this city, I was continually told the city can't build something quickly. They built this in 90 days. The city doesn't find land, doesn't make solutions. They found land. They made solutions here. They don't build consensus. Just this past weekend, we had 1,300 local residents walk through this site, touch it, feel it, because it's their city. And I'm so proud of what you have done here. I'm so proud. I'm so proud that you chose Pallet Shelter, an American-owned, an American-manufactured, innovative solution that when I was freezing my butt off last night, I got to walk inside and be warm and feel like it was going to be okay. I'm so thankful, Mr. Councilman, that you allowed Hope of the Valley to build a public-private partnership. I was told that the city wouldn't work with anyone, and that's a lie. You allowed me to bring in Zach and the team of artists to do this, to bring in different corporations to do this. You are leading the way right here in your council district. 
you are creating a model for the city, for the nation. I want to thank Beth Ann and all of the team at ZHC to make something so beautiful because we're helping people who might not have the most money. They deserve dignity. And there's something about in the middle of the arts capital of America, the arts capital of the world, our homeless services should represent that. And Mr. Councilman, I'm not going to let you forget. You have saved people. If it wasn't for what you did here, more people would die in addiction. More people would die in the cold. More people would struggle with mental illness. But because you stood up against naysayers, against a bureaucracy that is hard to work with, that you found a pathway where there seemed to be no path, that you have saved lives, and to remind you of that, because these tiny homes aren't tiny enough, we printed a tiny, tiny home. So this is for yours. I want you to remember that because of what you did, there are lives who are saved. We have one for you, Mr. Mayor. If can you give it to each of the elected officials. Because of what you did, there are lives that will continue to live and live their best lives. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so very much, uh, Rowan. Uh, Rowan's an immigrant from down under, uh, from Australia, from Sydney, uh, to be so, the, the promised land. Uh, now you're in the golden land, in the state of California. Um, one last thing I want to say it, to everyone is, um, and you were very, very generous, you know, um, uh, with your credit, but everyone here together, and under the tutelage of, of Mayor Eric Garcetti, again, let me really emphasize, you know, our departments, engineering, you know, um, you know, fire department, you know, LAPD, all the various departments have really made this happen because, again, this is a record setting, three months, 90 days. My great staff of all of CD14, the great staff of Assemblywoman Wendy Carillo and Miguel Santiago. Miguel, que pasa? You know? You know. I'm showing how fast you get built. You know. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, and lastly, and again, to our community partners who from day one were with us, you know, the neighborhood councils, whether you live in Highland Park or Garvanza or Herman, thank you very much for being their steadfast supporters, uh, not, you know, uh, uh, um, being a naysayer, but being part of the, the, this solution for the, the completion of this tiny cabin village. And lastly, I just want to say a very special thank you to the CEO of the Pallet Shelter uh, uh, Company based out of Seattle, Washington. She, she came down, she spent the night as well too. I'm sure she spent many nights, you know, in the Pallet Shelters. Uh, I want to get it for Amy King. Amy King, right over here. Let's get it for Amy King from Pallet. Uh, I'm giving you maybe a little preview right now. I don't know if it's okay to give a little preview right now. We're having discussions right now with the city, the, the mayor, uh, city staff, city 14 staff, because the idea now is because we are the epicenter for homelessness nationwide, that we should set up our own manufacturing site uh, in California, in Los Angeles, in the city of Los Angeles, in city 14, in Skid Row specifically. So we're looking to set up a manufacturing site in Skid Row where our unhoused neighbors, friends, and loved ones will be the ones, you know, assembling, manufacturing, you know, putting together, uh, I should say, assembling the pallet shelters so we can quickly move them to areas within the city of L.A. as well as region. So we're looking forward to making this come to fruition. Thank you very much. And let's give it up for our chair of Hope in the Valley, Teresa Jackson. Teresa Jackson right there. So with that, uh, we thank you very much 